imposter syndrome is the idea of being a complete fraud and that you, you don't really deserve to be where you're, uh, where you're at any point in time. Um, and the idea that any of us are experts in our field is, is, is alien to me. I don't think that's, that's true. I'm always fairly suspicious of people who call themselves experts because um, it tends to, to not be the case. Um, so why is it so prevalent in security? Why do I feel it's so, um, so prevalent in security? This is why, because fundamentally security is hard. I mean, it's just such a vast field of, of expertise that um, I don't think anybody's got it right. I don't think anybody's got the right answer at any particular point in time. Um, when I was doing some research on, on trying to put these slides together and to why I feel personally why security is hard, I started Googling applications or tools or uh, processes, procedures, and the amount of images that came up that, that showed these things is you know, it's huge. You can go and pick anything with a hundred odd things off of Google. I and mean, this is just some of them. Look at some of these technologies. Node.js, Jenkins, Kibana, Java, um, Jira, GitHub. Uh, we're expected to know a little bit about a lot of these things in security, which is very, very difficult to do. Um, there's Kubernetes down in the, the, the bottom left-hand corner now, which I started understanding a bit more about when I was at Skyscanner. But the irony was I couldn't even pronounce Kubernetes at the time, let alone know, um, know much about it. Uh, I still don't, so <laughs> again, I'm not an expert on, on any of these kind of things. And then I googled a, sim a similar image for security, and these are just a, a sort of list of, of products. Um, but it's incredible, uh, infrastructure security, you've got endpoints, applications, web security, mobile, threat intel, uh, risk and compliance, cloud. Uh, these are all just facets of things that we, we're expected to know uh, things about. And, and I find that very, very difficult to do. Um, this was AWS. So I've done a lot of work in AWS over the last, uh, the last three or four years, but I'm not an expert in AWS and I can't build anything in AWS. I can help you secure it. But this is just their product set within AWS just now. Uh, again, I'm sure even people at AWS don't understand enough about AWS. I had a, a technical account manager at a conference last week with us who, uh, he's your go-to person for AWS when you, you, you transition in your business. And we knew more about certain parts of the product than he did because we've been using it and he, he had it because he, he's got to look at all of these things. Um, one of my LinkedIn brain farts from uh, a year or two ago was I tried to list out all the areas of security that I've had an interest in or had input to over the last um, two or three years. And I stopped at 50 because I just got bored of trying to list them all. Uh, but I've put some of them on here and, and they are make interesting reading. Cryptography, good example, you've got the Bill Buchanan's of this world who've gone to university and studied for years or dedicated their careers to cryptography. Um, I had a comment from a boss uh, a company I was at that said, you should learn more about cryptography. I thought, people study for five years at university to understand cryptography. Um, now I know what a bcrypt hashing algorithm is, but then I couldn't, probably couldn't have told you what hashing was. So that's just been a continual learning path of, of understanding I need to know more about these things and investing time in, uh, in doing so. Networking. There, are net, there might be a network engineer in the room. That, your job is networking. Well, as a security person, we need to understand networking. Maybe not to the level uh, that, that you have. Um, and these are just some of the other, um, some of the other areas. And you might uh, naturally kind of fit into some of these if, you're, if we, we, we go, go to certain parts of our, our day jobs. But, the jobs that I've had, I've been expected to know a little bit about all of these things and sit in rooms with very senior people and articulate those things to, to those people. Um, so what can you do about it? And I've kind of outlined seven things that I think uh, individuals can, can try and, uh, things they can try and do to help. Um, this is really difficult. This is not just career-wise, I find this very difficult in my, in my kind of overall life. Give up caring whether you're right or wrong about things. Um, I'm 37, it's probably taken me to this age to really stop giving a shit about certain things where what does it actually matter if you're right or wrong? It's a path of learning. I think we've got good intent as security people and we're trying to do the right thing. But it doesn't actually really matter whether it's, um, whether it's right or wrong. Um, this has happened to me a lot over the last few years. The other people in the room often don't know the answer either. I've sat across from CEOs and CTOs and you know, major internet businesses. And nobody in that room knows how to get to the right answer. I've sat in rooms of 21-year-old graduates who told me what I should be doing and 
and that, that's awesome. That, that's we're, we're all in a room trying to get to the to the right answer. The worst outcome is nowhere near as bad as you think it might be. What's the worst that's going to happen if you get the wrong answer? Or you, I've just done it here. Look at that. I mean, I sent the wrong slides. I've cocked up today in front of a room of 60, 70 people. I'm sure people, yeah, they might be tuning in. Sure it's being recorded. But is that really the worst that can happen? I'm not going to go home and cry myself to sleep about it. I'll learn. I'll make sure the next time I send the right, the right bloody slides. Um, but the, the outcome is nowhere near as bad as you think it might be. Um, maybe a career end up. Um, seniority is not a sign of someone being better than you. Um, in my previous life, in, in my, the first company I was at, there was very much a hierarchy and, and it was uncomfortable to speak to your boss or your boss's boss, sometimes you didn't go that high. Um, they're not better than you, they're, they're truly not, and I, I know that from experience because I've sat in, in rooms of very senior people. Uh, in fact, you're probably better than them, they're just doing a very different job. Um, so. Trying to get your head around the idea of the hierarchy or seniority that these people are somehow are smarter than you or better than you, it just, um, it just isn't the case. Uh, that comes up a bit too early, so I did bugger that up. People are learning from you. You could sit in rooms of extremely experienced people, smarter people as you perceive them, but they're learning from you even if you think that they're, they're not. They might not be doing it consciously, but there's a subconscious learning uh, there. Um, keep learning. One of the main bits about security, I guess, is that it's just a forever, never-ending you know, learning uh, aspect. Uh, sadly, I kind of find it hard to switch off sometimes from security, even when I'm on holiday and on Twitter and uh, trying to keep up to date with things that are happening. Um, that's what interests me, that's why I'm, I love what I do, because it feels like every day is different and I'm learning something out of those experiences. Um, this one is one of the most important things I've been taught over the last four or five years in internet economies. Understand that you'll fail repeatedly, daily, hourly, and it's okay for that to happen. Um, don't know if you can read that, but it says failure, sometimes your best just isn't good enough. Um, now, is it actually a bad thing? I've articulated how difficult I find certain things and why my imposter syndrome has manifested itself and why, why it's been difficult. But is it, is it actually a bad thing? Um, I think some of the things on here that I'm about to show you know, it helps. Um, it can control egos, especially when you're in rooms where you have deep imposter syndrome where you feel, I have no idea why I should be in this room. Any ego that you might have had quickly goes out the window. Um, keeps you sort of staying humble and thankful for, for working in, in an incredible industry with, with great people. Um, and it, it gives me the chance to fail, uh, which, which was important. I kind of articulated that before. Um, what else has helped me? I'll go back to some of the, the things I've put on there before. So I do public speaking. Um, in the lead up to events, my palms are sweaty, you know, my voice goes. Um, even for this event today, uh, which I know, you know a few people in the room, and it's just down the road from where I live. Um, I probably Saturday, I've been nervous since Saturday to, to do this. Um, I've done keynote panels at Infosec where all they told me were three topics that we'd be talking about. And it was a room of 250 people. No idea what questions were going to be asked, no idea if I could even answer them. Um, but the five minutes before starting that, we just, you're trying to look relaxed and I'm a bit of an extrovert anyway, but you're still incredibly uncomfortable and nervous. Um, again, even the, the best people I've seen speak, um, not just in security, but, but in industry and in business, are nervous before they do these things. Um, if I go back to the DJing thing, I've hugged many a toilet bowl five minutes before, before DJing in clubs. Um, I run the Security Scotland Meetup. Uh, again, that allows me to meet great people, learn, get involved in new things that I wouldn't normally do, go outside my, my comfort zone. I run the AWS Security Slack Forum. And we've got people on there from Netflix and Uber and, and just these incredible organisations where every time I go on there, I read something that I learn, learn about. Um, and my regular LinkedIn brain files. Now, there's, there's method in the madness. I love it. There's not a right or wrong way to use professional social media. But just before I click submit sometimes on things that I put out publicly, I'm wary that I'm attached to companies and that kind of thing. But just before I click submit, there's always this process of, I'm just going to get 50 comments of people telling me I'm, a, I'm an arsehole or that I'm just thought I've got it wrong or, you know, just that there'll be a backlash. And it tends, that's never the case. You might divide opinion, some people will agree with you, so some won't. Um, but I always have that imposter syndrome in the back of my head, even when I'm doing more, more simple things. 
Um, so some sort of thoughts to leave you with, because this is important to me, and I hope it resonates with people in the room. Um, you can do any of these things. This is not, none of this is sort of spectacular. Anybody in the room, especially people at uh, university, you can do any of these things. I've got imposter syndrome, I don't see myself as being that good, yet I've managed to work for some great companies and, and hopefully do some good things. Um, you're awesome, you really are, and then you're the future, especially people in the university are going to be the future of cybersecurity, but everybody in this room has a really, really important part to play in our industry, in our business, um, and fundamentally you're helping shape cybersecurity, not, not just in this country, but across the world. So um, you should be very proud to be part of that. Um, I think we're changing society for the better, fundamentally. I think the talks from before echo, echo some of those things. The Internet of Things is a great example of, wow, look, look at what the world has shifted into very, very quickly, and we're playing our part in, um, in helping them. So, with my apologies for messing up on the slide there, I hope we've got time for some questions, because I hope it generates a little bit of uh, thought and debate. Um, if we've got, have we got time?